Okay, uh, so here I am. This is, again, the last video that we uh, edited. I have it down, so this is the screen recording here. But at the end of the video, I told you that I would play the video that we just edited for you at the end of this clip. So I have a few options here. I can render out the that project and then import the rendered video into this project, which would work but uh, I would either lose quality because I've compressed the video and then when I render this one out it's going to be compressed again or I would have to compress it in a lossless format which causes big file size which when you're working with video editing you have to get used to but I still either way have to wait for it to render but there is a third option Caden Live does allow you to do something very cool is I saved that project and I resaved it out as uh, truck Caden Live, so it's a Caden Live file. So I can open it up here. Let me let me open up another instance of Caden Live here, and you can open up more than one instance of Caden Live. As you can see, I do this all the time. Be working on different videos all at once, and I can go File, Open, and go to my home folder, which I'm at Caden Live, and it's called Truck Caden Live. And here is our project. So we got a few tracks, video clips, fading in and out. So again, I could render this out and import the video, or I can just import this project file, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna close that, and I'm gonna say File, Add, and I'm gonna find that truck file, and it imports it just like it's a video. It's not, it's multiple clips with effects and everything, but now I can just drag it down here, and again, it looks just like a video clip, but it's actually our Caden Live project. And I can see I can scrub through it here just like I was before. So I don't have to render it out twice. I don't have to render out, import it, and then render it out again. I can just drag and drop it here. So I have the tutorial. The tutorial fades out. This fades in with the music, goes all the way through. And then it fades out at the end. And then I can put my outro here, like so. And I'll have that fade in and from, oh, and from black. So this fades out. And that is it. So I wanted to show you that you could do that. You can uh, import a project that you've already created. Now, I want to show you a little bit more in this tutorial. So I'll bring up something that I should have brought up in one of the first tutorials uh, is, again, by default, you have three video tracks here and two audio tracks, and of course the video tracks also have audio. Well, let's say you want more video tracks. Let's say you want to have four stacked on top of each other for whatever reason. You can do that. Uh, you can also add more audio tracks if you want to do some more audio mixing in here. All you have to do is somewhere over here you can right click on one of these tracks. I guess you can't do it down here. You have to do it up here. And say insert track. And then you can say you want it either above or under wherever you want. So let's say I want to add in another video track and I want it way at the top here. I can say above video three and I want it to be a video track and I can give it a name. By default, it's going to call it video four because that would be the next number. And I click OK and you can see we've added a new track there. And then if you want, you can also delete tracks. It says, do you sure you want to delete that track? OK. And if I do you see my whole project, I'm not using this track either. So I could actually delete this track. Okay, and I'm not using this audio track, so I can delete this track. Okay, now I'm only working with three tracks, two video and one audio. And that, you know, it's kind of a short tutorial. Anything else I want to show you real quick? Um, really not. I want to save everything else for future. No, we've got time. Let's get into other stuff here. Let's talk about... Uh, other types of transitions. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this rendering out. So let me do that. I'm going to make it an MP4 and this was actually clip number four. So tutorial number four. We will render that out. I can now close that. It's still rendering and I'll say new project. Here's my default settings. So I really should set my default to be 29.7 since that's what my camera does. So I'm going to do that. And do I want to save current changes to this? Uh, I'm just going to say no. <laughs> there wasn't that much done there. And hopefully it renders out right. If not, I'll have to redo all that. But I'm going to say add and then I'll go to 
videos, and we'll go back and just use the same footage we've used in previous videos. I'll just grab a few of these clips. And even though I've set my project to the right thing, it's still asking if I want to switch, so I'll just say yes. So I'll pull down a clip here. Again, make my tracks bigger. And I'll find another clip that's a little bit longer. Here, this one's five seconds. So they're both about five seconds. So we know that if we overlap them like this, I can click this corner and it now dissolves. It does a fade. I can also mute both those tracks. And again, you can see what it looks like. You know, it played a little jerky there. Again, if I backed it up, and played here, it should play a little bit smoother, theoretically. Yeah, it's still a little jerky there. Again, depends on the speed of your computer, and it's not going to render like that. It's going to render smooth. That's just the preview. And we'll also talk about um, proxy videos in a future video. So if you have a slower computer and still want to edit HD, you can use proxy videos, which you can manually create, or Caden Live actually has features built in for that. But that's just a dissolve. So what other effects would you might want to have in there. Well, after creating the dissolve again, which is just by overlapping these two videos and clicking the top one here, I can click on this dissolve and we have a drop down here, which for some reason in this version of Caden Live, it's probably something to do with themes on my computer. It's very hard to read, but once you click on it, you can see it. It wasn't like that in previous uh, releases. Uh, but it, again, I don't use KDE, but it might be something with the KDE settings. Um, and you have all these different effects here. Some of these are, a lot of these are layering effects, how layers are mixed, which we'll probably talk about more in a future video. But um, some of them are also uh, effects for transitions. And mainly we're going to be looking at, we have the dissolve, but we also have down here, the very last one says wipe. And now you can see, as I scroll, it's wiping from left to right. And if I go back, it goes right to left. Now, let's say I want it to swipe from right to left. Again, I'll click on my wipe effect here. And if I do invert, now it's going to go from right to left instead of left to right. And if I click on wipe again here, revert, well, that makes more sense when we choose other types of effects because it just seemed to invert again. Now your wipe here, you also have a softness up at the top here. So it's right now it's a straight line cutting over across the screen. If you want it to be feathered, we can make it softer. See how it's now fading? You almost can't even tell that those are two different pictures there other than the fact that the truck's kind of clipped over. But now we have a nice soft fade and you can adjust that uh, as much as you want. You know, probably don't want to go too high for most things. And, uh, and you know, you may think, when will I ever use an effect like this? They don't use them in big movies. Yeah, watch the original Star Wars again. They do have a few cuts where it wipes like this. Um, but not only do we have a basic wipe left to right, we can actually choose from all these different patterns. And you can actually create your own. We're not going to get into that. But they're just still images. And basically, I think it's just adjusting the threshold for those, uh, which if you've ever done any image editing, and you know what threshold is. Um, but here we can do this one where it's uh, kind of opening up from the middle. And again, same thing, I can make it softer if I want. And if I invert it, instead of opening up, it's going to close to the middle. And of course, somewhere in here, there's going to be a basic iris. Probably radial will probably be an iris effect, which is what it's normally called. So now I can turn my softness down and you can go or you can have it open up. So you can click on the transaction, uh, transition I mean, and turn off invert, and now it's going to open up. So click on this again. Again, you have all these different ones. You can do this swirly line one. A lot of these you won't use, I mean, but you never know. They can be used in effects somewhere. Look at this one. It's it's like it's building it block by block. And if we revert that, it's going to go from the bottom right on up. And if we invert that, it's still a bottom right. I'm surely not, I can't, I know revert has a use. I can't remember what it is now. Uh, and then you have different types of spirals. So yeah, you can play around with all of these here. You can have a square iris. 
Okay, so speaking of an iris effect, so, which is what this is, radial is normally called, especially, you know, you think old black and white movies, things would fade in and out like that, uh, which is pretty high tech at the time. Uh, so there we go. But lots of times it will be uh, to a black screen. So something else we haven't gone over are generated clips. So let me delete this clip here. We'll leave that wipe there. Again, can either click here or I can click up here and I can go generate and I can generate different things. I can generate a counter. So if you wanted a countdown timer like you're doing an old movie clip, this will generate that for you. You can have it count up instead of down. You can change how long it is. Uh, you can say no background if you just want numbers. They have different styles here, all preset for you. Uh, and like that. I'm not sure what that does. I actually haven't played around with this too much. Oh, and it does have different sound effects, silent, or you can have it doing different beeps. Uh, so yeah, if you were to do that, Let's just go ahead and choose this one. OK. It will want to save it to a file, and then you can use it in the project here. I'll hit Cancel on that. So that's, again, if you clips, generate, counter. Another one is white noise. So if you want to create static, because you can't have static in a real uh, digital video. Like real static, as you know, if you have your video, you know, it doesn't even really happen anymore. But your TV, let's say you just hook it to a static channel, it'll just be a blue screen. They don't show you the static because it just means no sig signal. So what we're generating here is actually white noise image. It's actually faking. It's not really static. It's just an image. But I can click OK. And again, it will want you to save it to a file. I'll go ahead and do that. I'll just call it ST1. And then it would import it into the project right here. And for some reason it says invalid clip. Must be broken in this release of Caden Live. I actually have played around with that when I first started using Caden Live years ago and haven't messed with it since. You can also choose a uh, color bars here. If you wanted to generate color bars again, you would save it and import it. But another option you have which actually isn't under generated, is going to be your add color clip here, which is just a colored screen. So I can go black if I want, and I can call it whatever I want. We just I just called it color clip, so I can drag that in there. It's just a black clip. It's just it's like it created basically like a PNG or a JPEG for you. <laughs> um, you can also double click on it, or yeah, double click brought up the properties over here, which really doesn't have much in it. Uh, and we can also right click and delete it and then we're gonna go add color and we can choose different colors here so if I wanted a blue one I can say okay and you can set default length the default is five seconds but you can stretch it out longer if you want that's just the default when you drag it to the timeline so let's go ahead and add in a color clip and we'll just choose black and we'll put this here and now Let's delete our wipe and try again. There we go. So now it's dissolving. We'll click that just to remind you. We'll go down to wipe. We'll choose radial. And here, it's we need to invert this because it's going from the bottom clip to the top clip. Uh, and so we're just going to click invert. And it's really not. How about does that what the revert does? I'm kind of messing up here. There we go. That's what I wanted. That's what the revert's for. Uh, so here, without the revert, it's fading from black, which isn't right because that's our second clip. But if we do revert, it's going to go from our image to black. So if you ever have a problem with it going the wrong way, like it jumping to this clip and then fading or transitioning to the other one, that's what reverts for. I knew it had a use. So if we wanted to do an iris out, there we go. And how fast it affects is just how much it overlaps. So if we want it to be shorter, we just shorten that up. And now it's a little bit faster. And of course, we can go like this if we want to have it iris in. But of course, we're going to have to revert it again because now it's going to cut the other way. So to do that, we'll turn this off. There we go. 
And again, we'll drag another color clip here, add our little transition effect, choose it, go down to wipe, and we'll choose the radial, and we're gonna want this one to be revert. So, here we go. We have our black, we're going to iris out into our image and then iris back down into black. So that's an old school effect, but might come in handy. And again, you can also, as I said, feather that out, which actually looks a lot nicer. Always, I, I always, always, always feather stuff a little bit. Harsh lines never look great. There we go. And that is it. So I thank you for watching this. I hope you're enjoying this series. Uh, you know, Be sure to check out all the links in the description. I hope you checked out the full playlist. I should have said at the beginning that this is part of a series. I hope you checked out the previous videos uh, and that you're not just jumping in like uh, a fifth of the way or five videos in. And uh, filmsbychris.com, that's Chris the K. There should be a link in the description of the video to my website where you can search through all my videos from both my channels. And also there's a link in there to my Patreon page where you can become a supporter if you like my videos. As little as a, a dollar a month is much appreciated. Uh, and if you just want to give a one-time uh, support, uh, there should be a PayPal link on my website. And uh, if you can't support financially, think about sharing this video, liking this video, subscribing, and commenting. Love to hear what you have to say. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.